My name is Wayne Kimmel, and I'm here today to talk about how you can network your way to success. I was born April 30th, 1970, in Wilmington, Delaware. Now, when I talk about Delaware, most people look at me and say, where is that place? I've never even been there. I've driven through it, maybe. Is it a small state, or is it a county of Pennsylvania or something? Most people don't, don't, don't know that, but I, that's, that's where I was born. And I grew up a big sports fan, wanted to be a professional athlete, dreamed to be a professional athlete, trained to be a professional athlete, or at least to try to make it, make it in college. It didn't happen. But that's what I, it's one of my big passions, something I love. I love sports. I go to college and went to the University of Maryland, and I got this, what I would call my portable computer. It was a Mac Classic. And it was amazing. It was amazing. It was better than my word processor. And it was this thing that was allowed me to write papers on it. But it was connected to nothing because the internet wasn't there yet. But I loved it. And it intrigued me. And it was just really, really interesting to see what was, you know, I was thinking about what, so what's next? How are you going to make this thing better? When I had my dot matrix printer that would zzz, zzz, you know, the, that's how it would, would print like that. And then, but then, look, my whole life, as that kid who grew up in Wilmington, Delaware, I was gonna be a lawyer. That's what my parents and my grandparents expected me to be, to be a professional, to be a lawyer, to be a doctor. In my family, it's a lawyer. Every one of my family is a lawyer. So it was like, that's what I was gonna go do. So that's what I did. And after college, went to, went to law school. And that was the plan. And now I stand in front of all of you as an entrepreneur, a venture capitalist, an author, an aspiring philanthropist, someone who wants to change the world. How did this all happen? How, how did we get here? How did, how did that even, how did that happen? And I think that's the opportunity. And that's the thing that I look forward to sharing with everyone today about how this all happened. Well, it was the mid 90s. In the mid 90s, this thing called the internet was coming. And it was like the coolest thing ever. I was able to call my brother and talk with him on the phone and say, you know what? I'm gonna hang the phone up with you right now. And then I'm gonna tell you the score of the Sixers game, what the halftime score is. I'll call you right back. And I would quickly hang up the phone, I would dial in on my modem, and I would get the score, and then I would call my brother back, and he was nine years old, and I would say to him, guess what? The Sixers are winning 60 to 58. He was like, no way, that's amazing. How, how you, I, and you didn't even listen to the radio and you were able to do that like so fast. And then think about this. This is the mid 90s when, this, when we're talking about this. You know, the early to mid 90s when this was, when people, that was like an incredible thing where the companies like America Online and Prodigy and things that were like, you just dial up and try to get your information. But that was, this started to get me really thinking about things. So I said, so what do you do? Like, what do you do about that when you get excited about something and you want to make something happen? Well, you know what you do? You get off the couch and you go try to make it happen. You don't just sit back. When I, when I work with entrepreneurs, I hear them talk to me about their ideas and their companies and they're working in the lab and they're, don't tell anybody about their secret project. But I say, you know what, you gotta go out there. You gotta talk to people about it. You gotta try to go make it happen. You gotta see if it actually will work. And that's what you gotta do. You gotta go take that shot. You gotta take a shot because if you don't take a shot, you will never make the basket, right? You'll never make, you'll never make it. If you don't, you don't try to put that ball up in the hoop, there's no way it'll go in. That's what you gotta do. You gotta try, you gotta try to make it happen if you wanna be successful in life. And you gotta have an incredible drive and passion. And, but that's the normal stuff. That's the stuff that every teacher, every professor, anyone who ever talked about, though it's in the books, just drive, passion, curiosity. That's, that's what you gotta have. But it's something deeper than that. You gotta love it. Like, you gotta love what you do. If you don't love what you do, if you don't love your profession, if you don't love exactly what you're doing on an everyday basis, do something else. Now, stop it. If you're taking a class you don't like, drop it, move on to the next one. Do something that you love. It's so important that you do things that you love because that, you know, that's what life's all about. And one of the things that really has helped me in my business and what we look for in the kind of entrepreneur that we invest in. It's all about finding people that are smart. And that's the easy part. 
And that's what you, of course people have to be smart, but there's a really critical piece. It's also about being nice and being able to help other people. And it's important to think about that. And I truly also want to make sure that people that I work with truly want to change the world. And one of the things that's truly inspired me throughout my whole career and all the things that I've done and all the, all the kinds of entrepreneurs and people that I like to invest in and get an opportunity to work with is that this video, this video that I want to play right now is something that has inspired me and every single time I watch it gets me very, very excited. Here's for the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and square holes, the ones who see things in a different view. They're not on the group, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. Now, the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So this is the commercial that Steve Jobs played when he came back as the CEO of this company that he was fired. He was fired by the, his board at Apple, and then he was brought back, and he started this campaign. And this campaign, and what, it talk, what he talks about is this, at the very, very end of this, of this, is that he says, while some of them see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. And to me, it gives me chills every single time I hear it, every time I read it, every time I think about it. Because that's what it's all about. To me, that's what it's all about. So, how do you actually do this? How do you actually go out there and change the world? And how do you get to go do things that you're passionate about, that you're excited about, that you want to go do to make this incredible difference and do something that's amazing in the world? Well, I think there's something that, you can, that really can help you uh, make it all happen. And it's just this simple thing called networking. Networking is something that most people say, okay, you gotta go out and network. Well, what does that really mean, right? What does that all mean? What is networking, right? Well, networking to me is going out there and trying to get as, collect as many contacts as you can as possible and try to turn them into true relationships. But how do you make contacts? Where do you go? You know, what do you really need to take with you to go do this? What do you say? Now, most of the time, no one tells you. Because people will say to you, just go network. It's really easy, just go out there and network. Well, for what? I mean, how do you do this, right? So I think about this. I think about these two all the time, and I think about me, me being this guy trying to go out there and ask this girl out on a date. To me, that's what I think about during networking. Now, why do I think about that? Because that's really hard. It's really hard what this guy's trying to go do. He's trying to ask her out. That's a hard thing to do, okay? Now, in networking, it's not, it's not that hard. Because all you want to do in networking is get someone's business card. That's your goal in networking, is to get a business card. And you also, I believe, should have your own business card, no matter how old you are. Whether you're in high school, whether you're in college, whether you're, you're running your own business, you have a business that you're involved with, or that you're even retired. The fact of the matter is to have a business card because I believe it's the best icebreaker. It's a, in a way for you to be able to introduce yourself to somebody, anybody. No matter if they're the CEO of a major company or it's just someone that you just met on the street and you just want to say hi, here's my information. It's a great, great icebreaker. So every single day when I wake up, I fill my right pocket with my business cards and I keep my left pocket empty. And my goal every single day is to empty my right pocket and fill up my left pocket and collect as many contacts as possible. But that's not it. That's not the end of it. 
That's just getting contacts. What do you do with them? Well, as a kid, I loved sneakers, so I would just put them in all these sneaker boxes and save them, right? Um, but today, I still, I guess my, my son loves sneakers. He's the one, so he's got all these sneaker boxes. I still use these sneaker boxes to keep all my cards in. But you're able to, once, once you get this information today, you are in a, in a position to be able to connect with people and stay in touch with them for the rest of your lives through all the social networks that are out there today. So you can know what happens with every single contact, every single relationship that you, you make today, you can have them stay with you for the rest of your lives. Because who knows, someone that you meet in a Starbucks today could turn out to be the CEO of a major Fortune 500 company. Someone in your class today, someone that you just happen to bump into could turn in to be a major person that could help you, as well as the most important part, how you can help them. And that's one of the amazing things about networking and also about relate, building relationships. It's not only about what can they do for you, it's what you can do for them. And that's something that you really have to think about when you're, in, when you, when you're out there networking. How can you help others? Now, I love this whole networking thing, and one of the things I love is the fact is that once you get to meet people, you know it's their birthday. Now, why is that so important, and why do I love birthdays so much? Because it allows you, once a year, at least, to check in on every single person in your network. Because Facebook and LinkedIn and all these companies will say, hey, it's your, it's your friend's birthday, it's one of your contacts' birthday. And it allows you to check in and see what's going on in their lives. They may have had a baby, they may have gotten married, they may have just graduated high school, they may have graduated college, they may now be the CEO of a major company. And you can check in with them and say hello. And that allows you to do something, to stay in touch, to keep that relationship moving. Now why is that important? Because if you look at how business gets done, business is done by people who know each other and have some kind of connection with each other. So to have a connection, to try to establish that connection, However, whenever, on a daily basis, it'll allow you to be successful in whatever you decide to go do. Now, another thing that happens in the networking situations is you get name tags. You go to networking events, or you go to a different event and you have a name tag. And name tags are the best. Why do I love name tags? Because they're basically like a billboard that you just put on, that you put on your, your shirt or your jacket you're wearing, and you can tell people who you are. Because if you're at a networking event or you're at an event, you're there because you want to meet other people and you want other people to meet you and you want to try to find a way to maybe make a connection and, and help each other. So how do you actually, where, where do you wear this name tag, right? The question always comes down, people always say to me, should I put it on the right side, the left side, where do I wear it, right? Well, I always say, I believe that it should be on the right side. And why, here's why. Because when you're reaching out to shake hands with somebody, they're able to, you, if your name tag's right there on the right side and you're reaching out, they're seeing your name on the right side and you're able to see theirs and you don't have to look across and you can look directly in their eye and you can see the fact that they have their name tag in their place and you have yours and you're leaning in and that's just an easy way for you to do that. So I believe you should always wear your name tag on the right hand side. Now, the question always comes, you have these tips, you have your cards, you have everything you're ready to go do, but where do you go? Like, where do you go? Okay, people say network, right? So where do you go? Well, here's the problem, a lot of entrepreneurs this is actually the house where Steve Jobs, and this is the garage that, where, that um, Apple was founded in. Well, do you think like Steve Jobs and Wozniak and the other guys who started Apple just hung out in their garage and you know, they found someone like, people were just walking down the street and knocking on doors like, hey, you guys need some money to open up your, your, your new computer company? I don't think that happened, right? They didn't just hang out in their garage, they, they, they went out of it. You, you, gotta, you gotta go out, but here's the thing, I wish you know, I always say that, I don't know, and here's the thing, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to raise capital for your business, people aren't just walking around the streets just throwing money in the air, typically. You know, but by the way, I always say to people, if, if you do see anybody who's running around like throwing money in the air like that, call me, I'll help you collect it. I'll be, I'll be right there with you. But that doesn't happen. So you have to go where the money is. You gotta go where, the, where, where it's all happening. Where is it happening? Where are the places where people go who are some of the top investors, the top thought leaders. Where do, the people hang, where do these people hang out? Well, typically, they hang out at high-end restaurants. Now, they hang out at high-end restaurants or high-end hotels. 
Because why? Why do they go to these places? And why are these places places to go? Because almost every single morning between 7.15 a.m. and 9 a.m., the top CEOs, the top thinkers in the world have breakfast meetings at these five-star hotels and restaurants. So why don't you want to go there? Because you want to meet these people, right? Don't you want to meet them? You want to meet them. You want to meet the top people in the world. This is where they hang out. So let's go there. So what I would do, I would go to these places, and I would go there with my right pocket filled, filled with business cards, my left pocket empty. My whole goal was to empty that right pocket and try to meet every single person who was walking in that door. Because I knew that the people in there were the kind of people who were making, making it happen. Why? Because who else can afford an $18 omelet? Unless you're a major CEO, or unless you have a lot of money. That's how much the food costs there, right? So if they're there, if they, that's, they're there. I'm telling you, no matter what city, whether it's Hong Kong, Tel Aviv, London, New York, San Francisco, you name it, the top restaurants in the world, that's where these people go, that's where they hang out. And if you wanna meet those people, because they're not gonna just come to your garage, they're not just gonna come and knock on your door and say, hey, you want some money for your idea? You gotta go to them, you gotta go to where they go. So before we, before we finish, I think one of the most important things in being successful, in being an entrepreneur, and being someone who wants to really change the world, you have to think about helping others and giving back. It's all about helping other people. If you help others, it will certainly come back. So you wanna think about this. One of the most important things that you can do when you're with somebody who's even way more powerful, or he has way more money than you, or who has more influence than you, ask them this question. How can I help you? How can I help you? You could be with the CEO of the top company in the world, and I bet if you really think, and sit back and think and say, because here's the thing, that CEO, every single day, someone walks into her office and says, give me something, give me something, I want something, I want something. Everyone wants something from them. But if you can go in there and say, how can I help you? What can I give you? How can I help your life? How can I help your family? How can I make it better, make your life better? It changes the whole conversation. And all of a sudden, it, it just, it, it, it changes everything. Think about that, I think it's a really big thing. Now I'm gonna leave you with one last top secret tip that I will think will help you be successful in life. And it's a really, really simple thing, but it's something that most people don't do. It will surprise you that in business, most people don't say please and thank you. By saying thank you and sending people thank you notes, when people give you, when you're, when you're armed with your business card, you gotta put it out there and then you get one back, send them a quick email of saying thank you. Thank you for your card. And I wanna thank you for all your time. And I think you gotta go out there and just go make it happen. And you, once you do that, you'll be successful and you'll go make it happen and you'll be successful in life. Thank you very much.